What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Sheehan Show here on Sherdog.com and coming to you from a very cold and wintry Ireland here. But it's appropriate I'm in Europe because today I am looking ahead to two big uh, European cards this weekend. It's kind of, I suppose, a European MMA preview. Uh, Cage Warriors 146 goes down and KSW 76 as well. Um... I suppose most people would argue that these two promotions are the two biggest promotions in Europe uh, at the moment. New, I know Bellator have signed a lot of people are, and are doing good things in Europe. Uh, PFL are trying to come into the market as well. You know, we saw they brought over a couple of cards to the UK. Um a couple of months ago and you know they're starting the European thing and all. But where we are at the moment, uh these are are the two biggest and best. You know, KSW have uh, filled out stadiums for years, paid people so well that they haven't wanted to go to the UFC or needed to go to the UFC or anything like that, and done an absolutely fantastic job. You know, give us a different look at MMA, I suppose, um, a different presentation, and doing absolutely you know great job. They, they came here to Ireland once, and I was at the card, and it it was like an event I had never seen before or since in in MMA. It was. Absolutely brilliant! If you ever get a chance to to go to a KSW card, I would I would always <laughs> suggest that you do because it's a it's a different sort of experience. And then on Cage Warriors on the other side, you know it's a hundred plus fighters now that have gone or are around that anyway that have gone to the UFC from Cage Warriors. That is the proven ground to go there. They have excellent matchmaker with Ian Dean, probably the best matchmaker in the world uh, to get a guy or, or a lady from, you know, 3-0 to, to maybe 10-1, and 10-2 and, and go to the UFC and be well prepared. You look at the likes of Paddy Pym, but now you look at the likes of, of uh, Ian Gary and many, many, many more. Jack Shore, Nathaniel Wood, names go on and on and on. And um, they're constantly putting on big cards have been doing for years there's a bit of a hiatus there a couple of years back but they do absolutely great stuff so two fantastic promotions and i'm glad to be able to uh <laughs> to, to be able to, to look ahead to both of their cards this weekend because they're very very good again cage war is in the middle of a three card run uh, at the moment this is the middle of, the, of those three cards um ksw have they have a lot of stuff coming up as well. They have that massive uh, Pudzianowski fight uh, coming up as well, which I know everyone is absolutely uh, uh, dying to to, uh, to 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 watch, and uh, I can't wait for that again. Obviously, against Mamet Kaladov, so that's going to be absolutely huge. So let's let's talk about KSW first all together uh, and go through some of their fights. So I'm going to look at maybe the top uh, two or three fights from each of the cards, and maybe run down a couple of the other fights on it as well. Again, let me just give a quick shout out to my guy Sean Dinny, who's always a great help with these KSW. W cards, if even you know if the pronunciations, where the people are from, where they're training, because you know it, even in like in the UFC and caterers and other places, it's hard sometimes to even find out where people are training. But shout out to my guy Sean, who's a great and follow him at Dinny Rants over on Twitter as well. He's absolutely brilliant for all this knowledge, keeping people updated as well on the scene. You know, he does an absolutely great job there. So. I suppose let's start at the main event, and, and the main event is from the interim uh, lightweight title. Uh, it's Saldine Parnas against Sebastian Rakowski. Um, I suppose everyone w at this stage, if you follow the scene, would know Parnas. He's been around for a good while. He's the, f uh, the featherweight champion. He's moving up. He was meant to fight Marion Zakowski. Um, but he pulled out with injury, leaving this uh, interim title fight. Um, but he's a very exciting fighter. As I said, been around for a while now. One of these fighters that if he wasn't in KSW, if he, let's say he was in Cage Warriors or he was in another promotion, he would have been signed. You know, maybe Bellator would have given him big money. Maybe the UFC would have tried to sign him without a shadow of a doubt. He's good. He's sixteen and one. You know, and and that one loss, if I'm not mistaken, I think I think he won the fight back straight away afterwards. He got caught with a with a big shot. Um, and the fact that KSW pay well and can keep guys like this, it's it's absolutely huge. Now with uh, you know with uh, MMA being legalized in uh, in France and he's training out of France, if I'm not mistaken, in French, it's uh, <laughs> it could be a bit different now because I'm sure there's a lot of that talent is probably getting paid a little bit better than uh, than most talent is, I suppose, to come because the the French scene is is absolutely massive and will be a thing that is um, you know that is. Uh, 
a war zone, I suppose, between promotions over the next while because they'll all want to be getting the best French fighters. But I, I will digress on that one, and I suppose we'll keep that chat for another day. On this fight itself, uh, you know, both, you know, I went back and watched some fights of both of them last night, both very similar, I would say. Um, Sports out pause. Uh, Parnas loves to throw lots of feints, loves little small leg kicks. I would say he circles a little bit better than Rakowski. Uh, he's confident throwing counters off his back foot and very accurate. Rakowski, on the other hand, he is maybe a little bit more static in the pocket. Very strong, nice fundamental fighter like uh, like Parnas is as well. Loves the high kicks. Loves the high kicks. He cuts the cage very well. Again, very accurate. Two very accurate strikers. That's something that when you're looking at both of them, you can't help but see the accuracy with which they both throw lovely straight lefts down through the middle fighting out and out southpaw position now Rakowski he lost to, to um, the, the, the champion uh, last time out in a close fight um, which was split 48-47 I think on two of the cards um, as I said very good striker he's a background in, in Sanda Karate um, you know the similar sort of of fighting style I suppose that Parnas has um, and you know to go up against someone who is similar to you I suppose it's not a thing both of these lads get too often because to find someone that highly skilled in the way they fight both so pause is uh, you know is, is, not, uh, is not that common I suppose uh, Parnas as well he's aimed to become the second uh, double champion in, in KF, uh, KSW history after Matthias Garmat so that adds another layer to him you know they're looking for the next there with, with Garmat gone now for a few years with Saldic gone and could that be Parnas I, I like if he becomes a double champion I think it probably uh, you know probably will be um, but it's a very interesting fight here like I I look at this fight and I, I, I'm trying to you know, since I watched both of them, I'm trying to kind of find what the X factor will be, and I'm honestly maybe not sure because I, I just and there's a few fights we're going to talk about like that uh, here today, but the battle for the front foot here I think is actually going to be massive because both guys. You know, both guys can throw counters if they need to. Both guys can kind of, um, you know, fight in all areas, but. Rakowski especially loves that front foot and if you give it to him and he cuts off the cage against you he's going to win that fight all the time and I think Parnas is like is he going to want to allow that is he going to let that happen I, I find that kind of hard to believe so like do, does that mean he's going to fight off the front foot doesn't mean he's going to fight maybe a different sort of way maybe, you know I, I'm not sure which the answer is there but I don't think he can fight in the way he normally kind of fights, where he looks for those big counters off the back foot. Now, if he does, and maybe, and maybe he will, we're in for an absolute stormer of a fight here. We're in for a, a tremendous fight here, because both lads, like from what I've seen, both lads are uh, really good in where the other person wants to fight. So Rakowski wants to fight going forward. That's where he's really good. Parnas not necessarily wants to fight, but does fight very well going backwards. So if he won like going forward, one like going backwards, and they both fight brilliantly there, that leads to a very good fight. Now, as I said, will Parnas want to fight that way? I am not too sure, and I, I, I think he'll probably change things up a little bit. The other X factor I think that might be the difference is... I think even though Rakowski is very good um, at cutting off the cage, I just think maybe the, the ability to circle of Parnas on the outside and his movement on the outside will be a little bit too much for him. And if that is the case, how long will Sebastian keep going trying to cut off the cage before one before he gets sick of it and two before he gets tired? And when I say get sick of it, if he can't do it, you'd naturally like, I'm going to have to change things up, I'm going to have to do something different. And then if you do that, and let's say you try to like take a step back and, and get Parnas to come forward, you know, you're taking yourself out of your best game then. And that's a dangerous thing to do as well. So uh, a very interesting fight. If I uh, if I was to give my pick, I'll, I'll pick Parnas to win. We'll have, obviously have the, the bets uh, later on in the week as well, and maybe I'll have a better two from this, but uh, I would probably just go with Parnas, but I don't think it is, uh, you know, you have to take into account as well the fact that he's gone up in weight to fight a guy who is big at the weight. So it's, it's a, an interesting one, and I suppose we, we will see how it works out. 
At the co-main event in is Adrian Bartokinski. Uh, my apologies if I've absolutely ruined these names. But anyway, against Christian Kashabovsky. Um, this uh, could be a title eliminator. Uh, Saldic has gone now, obviously, over to, to one championship, and he was the one seventy pound champion. Um, and both of these guys are. I, I've written down in my uh, <laughs> in my notes here for uh, Bartokinski uh, brick shit house, and I I think I think that is fair to say of both of them. Um, do you know what? Uh, <laughs> it's it's a fight where. If you look at Christian's style versus Adrian's style, I think there's ways that uh, Kashubovsky can win this fight. Because, you know, um, so uh, Bartokinski is seen as the kind of the, the new breed, 12 and all. He's going to be their next star. And watching his, you know, watching his fights. He throws up massive power, throws bombs down through the middle. He's a, he can wrestle as well. And I watched his last fight. He went for a few takedowns and managed to get him and didn't start to strike him. But it seemed like he was kind of dead set on wrestling. And he fights at a massive pace as well. And the, the surprising cardio for the pace. I was even talking to, to Sean as well about it. And he, you know, he kind of said that to me as well. He can keep going. He can still knock you out in the last minute, which is, is crazy. If you just look at him and the amount of muscle he carries, it's mad. But... Kashabowski, on the other hand, he is very good defensively, very big and strong, and he fights a kind of a slower pace, but he, he his shots right down the middle are really good. And if you look at, uh, as I said, if you if you look at the matchup, and, you know, it's horses for horses here, um, if Bartosinski throws all those f- shots, and if Kashabowski is very good defensively and blocks all those shots, like... What's going to happen then? Like, uh, like Bartoszynski is is, uh, or Bartoszynski is, is ne- going to need to land a lot more of those shots than he normally does. I think, and then you'd normally expect him against Kashubowski because of his defensive ability. Like, I wonder, I wonder, you know, will, will he try to wrestle? I know uh, Kashubowski is a very, very good wrestler as well, so that's easier said than done. But I think he does need to change things up because if this turns into a fight where Bartoszynski's coming down the middle and he's throwing those big hooks and those big shots that he has thrown in the recent fights that I watched, I think Kashubowski is just going to block, 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 block and then hit him with a one, two, three right down the middle. I really do. So, like, this is one of the interest to see the odds for this. I, look, I do think... Uh, Bartoszynski will win and I think he'd be a big favourite when the odds come out but I wouldn't at all be shocked if I woke up on, on Saturday morning or whenever it is after this card and saw that the Kashowowski had won now you know I think maybe some people would but just just based on the fights I've watched alone I, I, you know I go my pick is Bartoszynski but I wouldn't be surprised at all if uh, if that did happen um, the other big fight I want to concentrate on here for a second um and and then we move on to to cage wars. I'll I'll run through the the undercard a little bit here. But um, Pavel Pawlak against Tom Breeze. You know we all obviously know Tom Breeze uh, was in the UFC for a good bit. Obviously had you know s- some issues there. And I don't think anyone could ever talk about Tom Breeze's uh, ability inside the cage. But you know he struggled, I suppose, mentally and and things like that with with fighting. But he's come back. You know he's won a couple of fights over in Eastern Europe. He's gone to KSW, won a big fight there, and now he has another one as well. On, on what is it a month or six weeks or something after his last one not too uh, not too far anyway and that's a good that's a very very good sign you know hopefully and I've said it before like I think Tom Breeze needed to pl- fight in a place like KSW that will get him five six fights a year you know I, I think he's the type of guy who just needs to be fighting 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 all the time and you know, getting more used to it again, I suppose, getting more confident with it in terms of just putting on the gloves, strapping up, walking out and doing it. And, and you know, maybe then I move back to the UFC or maybe KSW is the place for him. But what uh, we leave that aside and we'll just talk about his ability. He's a really, really great, a great fighter. Like Tom Breeze, I, I looked at Tom Breeze and, uh, you know, he fights out the same place as, as the Edwards brothers and, and Jai Herbert and others in Birmingham. And, um, I always thought he was one of the cream of the crop, to be honest, because he's he's brilliant, high level Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt, um, very good striking. You know, I was at his fight against Carl Pindred, and he just like decimated him. And I have a lot of respect for Carl, you know, but to do that to Carl, a guy who can take a shot, you know, and um, he's one of the toughest guys you you could ever see fighting in MMA. 
it says a lot about Tom Breeze. You know, he's got great submissions, guillotines, rear naked choke and all, but big power. And you look at Paul Acton, I'm watching a few of his fights. A very interesting fighter because he's very active on the outside. He was he was in the UFC as well. He actually lost to uh, to Leon Edwards, Tom Breeze's um, uh, teammate. So that's a, an interesting one. I'm sure they'll know a bit about him. Something goes into my eye. Um, very active on the outside, as I said. A lot of variation, turning kicks, front kicks, side kicks. But to me, he throws too much. He's too active. Um, and for someone who is not that experienced, I think he makes a very, very tough fight. So if you're putting him in there with someone, let's say five and or six and or something like that, who has never faced someone who is unafraid, like he's, uh, if you're talking about Pollack, just completely unafraid. He will go out and he will throw his shots. He's exactly, if you're a coach, he's exactly what you want. You teach him everything, you go out and do it. But when you are experienced like Tom Breeze, 18 fights and one fifteen of them, you've seen that before you've seen that in training people come forward you know you train with with leon edwards and you train with fabian edwards who will do that right you're just going to be able to like see those shots coming see how many of them he's thrown and kind of pick off in between or move away and make him tired and come back in like the more shots you give the more opportunities for counters you give as well and the more opportunities kind of to, to dip underneath and maybe get a takedown and to use that brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt um now that's easier said than done as well but I really think that Tom Breeze has a massive advantage here in this fight. Um, if Breeze does it get to the ground, you know, he's going to have a massive advantage. I think Breeze can have an advantage on the feet as well if he can deal with that. It's not even forward motion I, I, I necessarily. It's the big kind of... Um, uh, Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like the, the amount of shots he throws more than anything else. That's the big thing about Pollack. And if Tom Breeze can deal with that, I think he'll win the fight. But another very, very interesting fight uh, there as well. Um, elsewhere on the card, uh, I'll run through these pretty quickly and then we, we'll move over to, to Cage Warriors. Uh, Arthur Shipak, who's 8-1, is second on Brian High, who is 18-8. Uh, and eight. Uh, Two, you know, two good, well-rounded fighters. Um... Hi is a Dutch kickboxer. Arthur fights out of Belgium. He's very well rounded, good, accurate striker. Um, you know, probably I, I would say probably going to be a, a, a striking match here. Uh, Arthur's only losses to Benoit Anthony, who we obviously seen uh, in the UFC. Um, you know, m- maybe Arthur will try to get it to the ground, and if he does, he'll have the advantage there. Uh, but who knows? You know, Hi could make it an exciting one there. Um, in the next match, we have Magic uh, Kazichko against Francis Barrio, who's 10 and 2. Uh, Barrio is a very, very good wrestler. He's competed in Greco Roman. A uh, lot of submission wins. Uh, very good, obviously, against defense as a Greco fighter. Uh, Magic then uh, fights out of Poznan. Uh, a kickboxer. Um, you know, can go for 15 full minutes. But look, if the takedown comes. You're, you're probably favouring Barrio there in that one. Um, Anton Rakitin is also on this card, you know, a guy who's been around for a long, long time, former champion at £135. Uh, he's taken on uh, Zuriko Zhuja. Um, he's uh, a prospect out of Georgia, and obviously, you know, the, you know, the, the Georgians have taken over him in the last while, so many of them around at the moment. They're, they're very, very good fighters, each and every one of them. Um, very well-rounded, strong wrestler. Won a few fights for Armbar. A um, lot of submissions, a lot of decisions. Whereas Rakic, um, you know, he can fight all around as well. If anyone has seen him, he trains out of the UFD gym uh, in Dusseldorf in, in Germany. One of the, you know, one of the best gyms in the world. Every It feels like every card now I'm seeing someone fighting out of the, <laughs> the UFD gym. But, um you know, very good cardio, very good grappling, can strike for 15 minutes, can grapple for 15 minutes uh, if needed, and a, an interesting fight. Look, you'd have to go for a just post based on experience, but uh, we will uh, we will see who wins that. An Irishman on the card as well, Henry Fadipe, who is, you know, has been around the scene longer than me. You know, he's been around for a long, long, long time. Came back there recently and fought uh, John Redmond uh, and, and won that. And, and off the back of that, then has uh, has got a fight in KSW. I think he won fight before that as well. And he's come back. So this is, you know, every everyone in the Irish scene knows Henry Philippe for a long time and knows his quality. 
but maybe he wasn't like fully in MMA and you know he kind of got into MMA and out of MMA and back into MMA but hopefully this now you know earning a bit more money you know not fighting in the local team fighting in KSW it'll, it'll kind of get his grab back for this one well, grab I should have said that that's an Irish word grab means love he's lo- his love back for it uh, so um, yeah, he trains out of Phantom in, in Dublin very good uh all round fighter, very athletic, good jab, good, uh, good striking. He can wrestle. Um, you know, he's been John Redmond now three times, I think. <laughs> so, you know, he, he can do it all. He's fighting Albert. Uh, okay, here we go with this one. Odzimkowski. Odzimkowski, I think I got that right. Um, he actually commentates on KSW as well. The fans absolutely love him by all accounts. Um, so, you know, he, he was the guy who fought Tommy Quinn, actually another Irish man. Um, last time on, he broke his arm. Judo black belt with a boxing background as well. So this should be a, an interesting fight. Um, you know, Albert will probably be the favorite here, I suppose, but never rule out Henry Fidipe. Very, very good fighter. And, you know, he's due a big win in his career, I suppose. So interested to see that one. Um, the last two fights then on the card... Uh, Gra- oh God! Here, uh, Gracian Shadzinski against Valerie Mercia. Uh, Shadzinski has probably the advantage on the feet here, um, whereas Valerie, if the fight goes to the ground, she's judo uh, and wrestling background and uh, can hit hard on the feet as well. So that's an interesting one there. And then uh, Marek Samchuk. Uh, Samochuk against Philip uh, Brandisha opens the card 4 and 2 versus 5 and 4 as well um, uh, Marek won the Watore tournament um, there recently decent grappling um, good ground and pound as well and uh, uh, Philip has uh, good ground and pound but good on the feed as well um, you'd fancy Marek to take that down and win the fight there. So, yeah, very interesting KSW card. Obviously, the main event is a very, very good uh, fight. And, uh, you know, there's a few more underneath as well that are also very, very good. Let's jump over to Cage Warriors and talk about that. And let's start, let's start there with the main event as well because uh, Christian Neroy Duncan, to me, has been one of the most impressive prospects on the scene in a long time. I can't believe him. Look at his record here on Sherlock.com. Beautiful website I hear. Um, he's only 6-0. and, all. and if, if you were to ask me his record before, I'd be like, ah, he's probably like 11-12-0 or something like that. But he's only had six fights. You know, two of them against Will Curry. Last time out against Jatty Milan. Uh, he won the he won the belt. Like I watched a bit of Jaddy Milan before his fight against Matthew Bonner, and I was like, "This guy is going to win the belt." And a lot of people are saying, "Oh, what, what are you talking about? We don't, you know, he he's not kind of known or anything like that." And I was like, "I'm telling you that this guy is going to win the belt," and he did. And then Christian Nero Duncan came in and decimated him in in the third round. Uh, before that, as I said. Will Curry twice beat Justin Moore, who's a big tank of a man. Beat Kyle McClurkin, who's uh, you know coming out of Ireland as well, a very good prospect uh, there. And you know, it's it's hard to call anyone a better prospect than Christian Neri Duncan in the world at the moment. You know, uh, four of, or sorry, five of his six wins. Uh, by uh, by a finish, one submission and four knockouts. But his opponent, Marion uh, Dimitrov, watching a bit of him. And, and you just, uh, if anyone is on Sherlock Dr. Khan, it'll probably be up here alongside me. Look at his picture. I think that shows you exactly what he's like, an absolute beast of a man altogether. Um, all of his fights that I was able to find, they were all, so this is his first Cage Warriors fight, which is interesting, straight into a title fight uh, in his first Cage Warriors fight. Um but you can kind of see what now all, as I was saying there all of his fights are in a ring a lot of his fights that I was able to find anywhere are in a ring and uh, Ian Dean has plucked out another guy who looks to be a top 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 uh, guy he very strong comes straight forward at you hits out like I saw one fight he was fighting a guy who was doing nothing but trying to wrestle and wrestling him and wrestling him and wrestling him and every single time he kind of got that control with his hips turned the guy around and landed on top like every time and it's not often you see that uh, in fights against people who are like trying to wrestle you and who look like they are pretty effective at it and then they just end up losing that position he's 10 and 2 uh, in his career, but those two losses came in his first two fights back in 2012 and 2014. He hasn't lost since 2014, you know, and uh, seven KOs, three decisions in those, never won by submission, but can fight on the ground. I, 
I, I, it's a tough fight for both guys. It's a really tough fight for both guys. Look, the way I would break down this fight, I think if Christian Neri Duncan can use his speed and keep this on the outside, I think Dimitrov will have issues. But if he can get inside and Dimitrov can land his combinations inside, maybe push him against the cage and get on top possibly. No, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't. I actually don't think he'd be looking for that too much right now. I, I think at times throughout it, especially if, if Christian Neri Duncan is, is maybe winning the strike and I think Dimitrov will look for the wrestling, but I don't think it'll be his plan A if we want to put it that way. Uh, no, watch him come out and, and jump a double straight away or, or uh, you know, push him against the cage and, and pull him up with a single or something. But I do think Christian here, Duncan, like, having watched him now for a couple of years, I just think his skill set is too much for most guys, especially at middleweight. You know, when you're so fast and so um, accurate and so strong in lots of different areas, it's going to be tough for anyone to deal with you. And I think... You know, even though Dimitrov is a tough matchup, I think he's going to find Christian Nira Duncan even tougher. Um, I honestly like I, if you look at someone at, at this middleweight is not the best weight class in the world, if we're being honest. And there aren't loads of prospects. He, like Will Curry is probably the other top prospect in that division. Now, maybe I'm forgetting someone. I'm sure there's someone coming up and someone will give out to me. But um, I think it'll be hard for Christian Nero Duncan to find a challenge until he's in the UFC. And I think it'll be sooner rather than later that he's in the UFC because they're not going to let a talent like that be out there for too long because he is a top, top talent. But a very interesting fight. This is the level of fight that you would see in the UFC. You know, uh, there's a lot of them in Cage Warriors recently and this is definitely another one. So very interested to tune in and see this one. Um... Uh, elsewhere on the card like it's a, it's a, as I said a very interesting card all the way around um, the co-main event is for the interim welterweight championship Jimmy Wallhead against Matthias Figlak um, Wallhead obviously been the UFC and, and Bellator and other places for a very very long time came back to Cage Warriors last fight and absolutely decimated Daniel Skibinski in 75 seconds to earn himself back into this place. Now, Reese McKee is the champion at 170 now, I think, Reese. He got married there a couple of weeks ago. Someone told me he was carrying an injury, but, you know, I'm sure he's looking for the UFC as well. He had a very rough fight last time out, so time to recover from that as well against Justin Berlinson. So they're doing the interim title here. Um, and it is a massive challenge for Matthias Figlak. 7-1, his one loss and, and only loss is to, uh, to Ian Machado, Gary, back in 2019. He's beaten, you know, Matters Flaminas, beaten Ken Kapainen, beaten Josh Plant, you know, who've been on the local scene for a long, long time. And, you know, the, the talk was of if he's not uh, straight into a title shot after his last one, he's only a fight away from it. And here he is in, in an interim title fight. Um, it's a Look, it's a tough fight for both guys. You have, like, the old, strong talented fighter in Jimmy Wallhead against the young, athletic, confident fighter in Matthias Figlak. Uh, do you know what? I'm interested. Like These two Figlak brothers, obviously his brother, uh, Mike Figlak, signed for the UFC and he didn't have the best debut. Um, and I'm sure he'll be back. But I, w I wonder what that... Um, you know what effect that had on the camp is Mateus kind of kind of going to try to change things up himself even though he wasn't the one who got the last I know you know what I mean but is there kind of going to be a different approach from him is that going to be a good thing or a bad thing you would suggest it's going to be a, a good thing you know um like in this fight uh, judo jimmy you know, you need to stay away from, from that judo. If he puts you against the cage, if he's pulling you down, if he's getting on top of you, that's that's a, probably a losing fight for Figlak. And I think he knows that. And I think Fig, uh, I think um, Wallet knows that as well. Uh, like, he, what Figlak needs to do here is he needs to keep this fight on the front foot. He needs to win the jab and battle. He needs to win the the speed battle, which I look, I think he will win the speed battle if it turns into that. But he can't let this become a um, kind of drag out five round fight if he does that Jimmy Wallet will be there and he'll make it really really tough Figlak has to put shots on him not necessarily ha I was going to say he has to put the pressure on him I don't think he necessarily has to put the pressure on him but he can't allow Wallet to put the pressure onto him you know if Figlak is the one struggling against the cage if he's the one struggling to keep the fight up if he's the one going backwards eating shots 
I don't think that's a thing that'll, you know, obviously work in his favour. I, I, I find this fight very hard to pick, honestly. I believe in Fidlack, I believe in his ability, but, you know, 42 fights into his career, Jimmy Wallet has so much experience. He's fought guys... You know, he's fought the who's who in, 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 in MMA in, in a lot of ways. Fought some really, really good guys down through the years, you know, from Lyman Good in the UFC to, to Danny Roberts to, you know, uh, Shea Mills even back in the day and, and many, many, many good fighters down through the years. You know, that's that's a tough thing to overcome if you're a figlack. Now, who am I picking? I'd probably, I'll go with figlack. I believe in his ability and uh, it's a very interesting fight. Um... You know, those, those are obviously two uh, championship fights there are the, are the two big ones uh, on this card. But, you know, some very, very good fights uh, other than that on the card. Manny Akpan is fighting Dr- Dean Truman. What a fight that is. I'm a massive fan of Manny Akpan. I just love his style. Uh, beat Conor Hitchens last time out with a spinning wheel kick. He did lose to Keir Harvey. But before that, he beat Ben Ellis. Um, you know, he beat Liam Malai, beat Jack Maguire, three good prospects on the way up as well. And he fought, even at amateur, some really, really good guys. Dean Truman, though, you know, another guy who's been around for a very, very long time. Lost a couple of fights now in a row, or, or more than a couple of fights even, but he's been fighting some of the best. And I fought Mads Burnell, fought Marcus Shadley, I fought George, uh, George Hardwick, who's the champion there now. But, like, just been around for years and years and years and years. And uh, it has, like, a very, very good style. A very, very good style for... Uh, <laughs> making a, a, a fighter like Matty Akbat earn it. And... I, I don't know, Ian Dean is better than me, but I'm like, maybe this is a little bit too too early again for Manny, only five fights into his career to fight Dean Truman. But I, I don't know. If I were to give my pick, I, I'll go for Manny. But just because I love his style and I, I really like him as a fighter. I like Dean Truman as a fighter as well. But uh, yeah, that's a, a very, very interesting one there. Uh, Lucas Capera is back on this card as well. He fought... Uh, George Hardwick last time out. He's fighting Aaron Johnson. Uh, Reese McEwen is fighting Adam Wilson. Um, Orlando Prince is fighting Liam Malai. Very interesting fight is when Shawi Busev is fighting Samuel Bark. Uh, if people don't remember Samuel Bark, he beat Tobias Sorilla last time out. And, you know, when he won that fight, a lot of people were thinking maybe he could be next in line for a title, maybe, or something. But that's not the case. Um, he is fighting uh, against uh, Yusuf here, who has, uh, you know, one win in cage wires, fought a bit in Brave and, and FCC as well. Um, it, you know what? It's going to be, it's going to be an interesting fight. Like Bark, he, I think Arilla fought a bad fight in that. And Bark is so dangerous, like he's flying knees. I remember I was talking to Brad Wharton on the preview show before, and he was kind of saying to me, watch out for this guy. <laughs> this guy is an absolute animal, and he is. But like, You'd still have to say maybe he's not the most well-rounded guy in the world. I'm sure Shai Yusuf will be trying to uh, to put pay to that, and we, we'll see if he can. Um, Sam Kelly against Jack Elgin is on the card. James Hinden, he's fighting Eric Margarian, who is a, a 36 fight, something like that, Hinden. He's two losses. Uh, six to two, Jordan Vucinic and Paul Hughes. So there's absolutely no shame in that, you know. Yeah, uh, he went to a decision with Hughes, and and he went into the second round with with Vucinic, But uh, there's no definitely no shame in that. And then uh, you know, really good fight, Stipe Beric against Aaron Aby. You know, and Aaron Aby, we know that the issues he's had down through the years, but he's come back and he's in such great form at uh, you know over the last few years. Okay, he lost last time out, but he beaten Samir Fadin and Jared Ofani before that. Just just a, a real inspiration and a great story. Um, Martin Collins, Adam Cullen, Adam Cullen, one of the top prospects coming through in Cage Warriors, uh, fighting out of out of Next Gen uh, as well. And his teammate Luke Riley, four and all, fighting Carol uh, Kuchla. You know, you look at Luke Riley, and it's hard to not make comparisons with Paddy Pimblett. You know, the kind of the, the hair, even though it's black, yeah, compared to blonde with Paddy, the the, the style, not even, not necessarily the style, but the stylish way in which he fights. Very interesting uh, prospect coming through. So, look, lots to see in that card in Cage Warriors. Tom Mearns is on the card as well against uh, Milada High. Antonio Sheldon against Jordan Back is loads to, to watch in that. And also watch throughout the weekend uh, in European MMA and KSW and, uh, and in Cage Warriors. So, uh, if you don't have enough there with UFC 281 as well coming up. Um, and... 
if you don't have enough watching there, you, there there's something wrong that's so anyway so uh, I will leave it at that let me know you're picking in the comment section below let me know which cards you're most looking forward to now the, I don't want to put them up against competition because they're they're both very good but KSW 76 or uh, Cage Warriors 146 let me know in the comment section below um, and most of all enjoy the fights week, uh, this weekend uh, I will leave it there my name is Sean Sheehan for Shardog.com and I'll see you all next time